So let me ask you guys something. What if you owned a PlayStation and you didn't want to burn every game in the world that you ever wanted to play, but were also too much of a cheap bastard to buy? What solutions do you have? Well, we do have something, and that's called the PSIO, or SIO. Uh, this is a device that will plug into the expansion slot of your PlayStation, and it will allow you to boot backups of your games directly from an SD card. Now, there's a trade-off, and for the most part, it's the cost. This thing isn't cheap. I think it's well over $115 or even $120. It might be more than that. Um, and on top of that, the real caveat is this is not a simple plug and play device. No, this requires internal modifications that must be done to your PlayStation in order for this to work correctly. Now today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this 75,000 series PS1 apart. We're going to do the mods that are necessary in order for this to work. Sit back. Strap on. It's Britney, bitch. Okay, so we have our packaging here for our PSIO. Let's just go ahead and open this up and see what we have to work with. Ooh. Okay. All right, so it looks like uh, yes, this is the mod board that has to be installed, and we'll take this out, take take that out, and take a look at it in just a moment. Uh, looks like they've got us some nice 30 aug wire here for hookup, and we have a little sticker that we can put on the bottom if we want to be really elite about all of this. Uh, and on top of that, we actually have the cartridge device itself, which is fairly well done. Whoops! And there's the SD port in the front. So naturally, let me see if I have a 75,000 series here, which I do. Um, the uh, expansion port here just beautifully interfaces and makes love to the PSIO, as you see. And unfortunately, it's just not that easy, though. We've got to get that, um, we've got to get this module installed. So let's take a look at the module, and let's talk about what it's really responsible for doing. So let me take it out of the, take it out of the packaging here. Now, you know, well, let's zoom in first. Okay, so we're looking at this switchboard, and what is this responsible for? Well, let me see if I can look at the part number here. Okay, that's an HC, that's a 4066 on board. So this is a bilateral bus switch. And basically the way this thing operates is that the CD-ROM drive and the PSIO, um, you, you need to switch a couple of those signals and gate them from one device to the other. So for example, if you're wanting to use the PSIO, uh, there are a couple of signals that need to be routed only to the PSIO and blocked uh, from interfacing with the CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM drive is vice versa. If you want to use the CD-ROM drive, those same sig two signals need to be switched to route to the CD-ROM drive and not to the um, PSIO. So that's what this does. This just handles the switching. Uh, basically, you're taking one device off of the bus, in a sense, and you're putting the other, other device on, uh, so they won't uh, conflict uh, over over the bus, um, basically. So at any rate, uh, this is what it is, uh, and this is what must be installed internally in order for this to work. So um, let's break down this PlayStation we have over here, and let's start with the installation. Let's do it. Let's break it down. Okay, the 75,000 series main board is removed. Now let's look at the documentation for the PSIO or SIO and see what's really involved to install the switchboard. I think most of the action is going to happen here on the bottom, so let's take a look at the docs and let's talk about it. Now, if you navigate to the download section on the SIO website, you'll find install documentation. Now we have a PU22 main board, so the download file that we need to access is for the PU22. Now when you open this zip file, you'll find a PDF, and in the PDF is basically the entire install document for putting the switchboard into position and making all of the necessary connections. Follow it. 
follow it very carefully because this is where a lot of people, it seems, run into trouble. But if you're doing a 75,000 series PlayStation, stick with me. I'm going to try to get you through this. Let's do it. Now, one more quick thing before we get started. When we install the SIO switchboard, I won't be showing you sweet tricks, cool wiring techniques, and sexy solder parn. Well, I might be, but that is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to help you and to show you how you can install this yourself without having to pay anybody else. And so by saying that, I'm actually going to be showing the PDF chapter by chapter, scene by scene, instruction by instruction, as we go through and do this so you can absolutely follow along with me. It's almost like an install guide, only I'm the installer. Let's do it. Now, step one says that we need to isolate pin five, which is right here, from this pin, because right now this pin is acting as a ground, but we need to repurpose this to be the enable pin for the switchboard. So what we need to do is we need to take something like an X-Acto knife, and we're just gonna come in here, we're gonna isolate this, and so to confirm that too, we'll take a multimeter, set it to continuity mode, and we'll just probe these pins. And if we do it correctly, we shouldn't be buzzing. So let's isolate this pin, let's get it ready, let's do it. Okay, let's see if that's good enough. Yes, it is. Now for the second step, we need to prepare the uh, chip select as well as the interrupt trace. Uh, if you look at the directions, the chip select, we need to sever the trace and we need to remove the lacquer to expose the copper. And for the interrupt line, uh, we don't need to cut this trace, we just need to expose the copper. So let's get to that. Okay, we cut the trace, now let's expose that copper by removing the lacquer. Now to do that, as I've recommended in very old videos, um, I strongly recommend the use of a nylon or preferably fiberglass pin. Just be very careful, this will remove a solder resist or solder mask, but as long as you're careful and cautious, it does a fine job at removing this, um, the, this lacquer. So let's do that. Perfect, and you know you've done a fairly good job when, when you look at the uh, vias there that you uh, stripped the lacquer from. They're a lot shinier than the vias that you haven't applied uh, that to. Uh, you know that you've removed that finish and you're, you've made a solderable surface. So that's done, let's do that. Okay, we've soldered the CD-ROM chip select uh, conductor. Now let's do the CD-ROM interrupt, which is pin 117. So I'm just going to uh, apply a little no-clean there. I'm just going to come here again. I'm going to just insert my tinned conductor. I'm just going to wiggle it into that via. I'm not going to do much, too, too much here once I get it in. I'm not going to necessarily fold it down in any direction. We've got good... Um, a good amount of no clean flux on there so we should have a good um, wetting performance here and we're just going to apply a little solder just like that and the light might be playing tricks on that but let me see if I can angle this up so you can see yeah, excellent joints there on both so that takes care of the uh, CD-ROM chip select and the interrupt signal uh, we've also uh, cut that trace and again if you want to make sure that you've thoroughly uh, or adequately uh, severed these traces just take your multimeter and just go to the place in which the uh, the uh, trace here is routed. In this case, it's, it's actually right here. So if we just come up here, for example, we cut the chip enable for the CD-ROM. Nothing, nothing. But if I actually go right here to where we severed it, uh, which I think is right in there. Yeah, see? So that's how you can check that. Very simple. Let's move on. 
Now, just as the picture I have uh, superimposed here suggests, uh, we'll be working with the CPU chip select signal, which is right here, and the CPU interrupt pin, which is buried uh, right in here. So the only trace that we need to cut is the CPU interrupt pin. So let me just get out the uh, old X-Acto knife, which I already have here. And let me see. Let me get my bearings here. Right here. Okay, I got it. Just looking at the graph, making sure I'm doing this correctly. Right, there's the old girl, so we need to slice that down. Let me just, it's kind of hard with the camera in the way. Let me see if I can get a little closer, just like that. Perfect. Let me get right on that trace, and I'm just going to very, not a lot of pressure at first. Real quick, I should have talked about this. When you're, when you're severing a trace on a board like this, the first pass that you make, you're just making your track for your knife to follow through on the next run. So you're not putting a lot of pressure down, you're just basically, you're just making a little groove. And with every pass that you make after you make your initial groove, you're going to put a little more pressure down on it, and that should be pretty good. So as you can see here, we got a pretty good, we got a pretty good little uh, slice here of this. Uh, but I'm going to do a couple of more, just for good measure. So I'm just going to come here and find my track, and I'm just going to go down again, very gently, down again, very gently. That should be pretty good. I think that's, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Just want to sort of move that out of the way. Great. Okay, since we have the CPU interrupt line severed here, let's just take our fiberglass brush and remove that lacquer so we can get a good substrate to solder to. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Eh, let me make a few more passes here. Two, three, four, five. Now we're getting that nice copper shine. And it's very it's very clear that the lacquer has been removed here in this area, and clearly not in these areas, so we're good to go there. Okay, let's just put this conductor in. Nice and easy, just like that. Beautiful. Okay, now the last two signal connections we need to make, I think, are pin 65 and 31 on the parallel port. And yeah, we've got the documentation up here. These don't require any cutting. So let's do it. Now, the install document has a specific place to grab power. And I don't know if that's for a specific reason or not, but that's what we're going to do for both ground and power. So here we go. Beautiful. And lastly, we need to grab 3.3 volts directly from the multi-out, I'm sorry, the multi-out, from the expansion connector here, and it's all coming from this pin. Just want to go ahead and add a little solder there. Now, it looks like we have a rat's nest of wires here, but I did this deliberately because we didn't solder anything yet to the actual um, bus switch here. And the reason for that is quite simple. We can always go back and we can look, as a matter of fact, I'll put the picture up right now, of where precisely everything is supposed to go. So we didn't need to solder this yet. We can make this look super neat because we have a nice map here. And I'm just gonna wire this in. Let's do it.
Whoops, sorry guys, I forgot to connect this one up. Now, if you guys have been following along with me, you should have an end result that's very similar to this. Now, as I said before, I wasn't going to make this some kind of super wire porn video. Um, this is just to help you guys who are trying to put these together yourselves. And it seems in my experience that the most common PlayStation that's being stuffed with these switchboards is the 75,000 series. I hope that this guide was sort of helpful. And now we're just going to load this bad boy up with an SD card that I think I've loaded Resident Evil 2 with. Now you'll notice when I power it on, regardless if the SIO is working or not, the CD always spins. But we'll give it just a second here and you'll see that the SIO screen will come up and it'll load the software menu. And from here you'll have a list of games. So I'm going to go ahead and load Resident Evil up. It should be Resident Evil 2, but I think I named it Resident Evil. And you can put artwork and all of that stuff in here too for your games. And there you have it. There's Resident Evil 2. And uh, I've not played too much with this. Um, I've uh, loaded a couple of games in, and I've um, you know kind of kind of tested it and, and really tried to sort of milk some of the features out. But so far, it works great. Um, works excellent. Now here's something else. We're going to go back to the main menu. You need to make sure that the switch is working correctly, and we're going to try to load a CD because remember we need to make sure those signals are changing over. And as you can see, the CD loaded just fine. And we're loading in, uh, I think this is Soul Edge, and it's working beautifully. So having said that, guys, I think this pretty much concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this was a good guide. Uh, again, it wasn't a super solar porn, um, you know, video. It was just, I wanted to help you guys. I've got this request a lot. So here it is. I envision that's Bob, and I'm needing him.